week four college football picks against the spread. Leave your comments with who you think will win these games and how many bets you won. And we're gonna start with Georgia Tech plus 10 at Louisville. Now the best that Georgia Tech and Haynes King at quarterback have looked against major conference opponents was last year against Louisville. They had seven explosive plays. And if it wasn't for a 16 point Louisville fourth quarter, the Yellow Jackets would have won this game outright. Tech has yet to generate an interception on defense in four games. So you think that a team that had 14 last year would just be due at this point in time. Georgia Tech is also 7-3 against the spread against ACC opponents in their last 10 games. And Louisville's last three wins against ACC opponents last year were all by seven points or less. Next game up. Utah plus two at Oklahoma State. Now, Utah hasn't been great on the road, but they were fine at Baylor last year with pig farmer Bryson Barnes at quarterback. Now, this week, they'll have Cam rising back, allegedly, and they'll bring back an aggressive rushing attack to Stillwater against the Cowboys team that seems to have forgotten how to open up running lanes for their own running back, Ollie Gordon, second. Now, their quarterback, Alan Bowman, has shown that he can throw for a lot of yards, but he also has 13 interceptions in his last 11 games, and he's not a mobile quarterback. And you don't want to give Utah's Van Fillinger an immobile target. He'll treat you like a pinata at that point. Next game, Cal plus two and a half at Florida State. Florida State struggles at the line of scrimmage are gonna have any team that visits Dope Walker Stadium thinking that they can show up and push the Seminoles around. Cause Cal handled Auburn's size and speed difference on the road with no problem. And this is a trip home for Golden Bears quarterback, Fernando Mendoza. So you know he gonna wanna show out. And it's hard not to like Cal in this matchup against a team that could only muster 12 points at home against Memphis. Florida State quarterback DJ Uyangalele played the best game of his college career against Cal last year when he was at Oregon State. So there is hope for Florida State fans. But if he can't replicate that performance and the wide receivers aren't catching the ball, running backs aren't hitting holes and the offensive line isn't blocking, the fans are going to start pointing to the coach. And once that happens, things could get very ugly in Tallahassee. Tennessee minus seven at Oklahoma. Both Tulane and Houston had legitimate shots to beat Oklahoma in the fourth quarter, but the Sooners defense held up. But do you really think that a Tennessee team that has run for over a thousand yards in the first three weeks is going to be a rock fight in Norman? Absolutely not. If the Sooners want to win this game, they're going to have to fix a whole lot of things on offense that haven't looked great in their running game and their young quarterback Jackson Arnold is going to have to step up big time. I can't go against what I've seen so far. So give me Tennessee and at least not one, but two scores. Colorado versus Baylor. Now I wrestled with this one because Colorado, ooh, they will let you down, boy. And Baylor used their game against Air Force to establish a previously absent running game ahead of the matchup with the Colorado team that is vulnerable against the run. And that's a good thing for Dave Aranda's squad. What might not be good is that Daquan Finn, who won the starting job at quarterback this season, was out with an injury, which led to Sawyer Robinson starting against Air Force. And the Bears have now a quarterback controversy on their hands, heading into what is the biggest game so far of their season, where their best weapon, you don't know their identity and who's going to be there and can you stick to it. Now, I'm not sure Baylor's schedule up to this point has prepared them to face a dynamic passing attack because Baylor's first three opponents so far have only completed an average of seven passes per game. And Shadur Sanders, he gonna have that by the end of the first quarter. So give me the buffs at home. And the game you need to absolutely stay away from is NC State at Clemson minus 20 and a half. Does betting Clemson at home make sense against a first time starting quarterback of a team that just lost to Tennessee by 40? Yes. Does betting Clemson as a three touchdown favorite against Dave Dorn make sense when NC State has won two out of the last three games with a far inferior roster makeup? Definitely not. So stay away from this game. And you guys, make sure that you guys like, subscribe, get notifications for the Unafraid Show, and most importantly, leave your comments.